بسم الله الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, uh, Well, let's just get started. I don't know where to begin. The first thing is that this is our second attempt to, to get this done. Now, we've having some technical issues and such like that and all, but uh, we're going to have to ask everybody to be patient with us um, just a little bit. Uh, before I introduce my guest here today, uh, I want to let everyone know why we were delayed. There were approximately six powerful airstrikes that uh, rocked the area that we are in right now. Uh, y you know, th the footage that we filmed, um, inshallah ta'ala, will be out tomorrow. Now, uh, the people will have to understand that, unfortunately, this is the life that we lead here. You can easily begin thinking you're going to cook dinner, you're going to go out with your wife, you're going to film a program, but then it doesn't turn out that way. So uh, without going any further into uh, any more details, I'm going to introduce my guest, and he is Amr. Devias, and I hope I pronounced your last name right. That's right. And uh, I'd like to say to you, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa rahmatullahi wa You'll have to kind of, uh, you know, forgive me because uh, they s said that part of my face is cut off. Now, I know that I'm a pretty good looking guy. So, you know, if part of it is cut off, you can just imagine. Why are you laughing? No, no, no. Oh, okay. I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Okay, I, I set you up for that, all right? I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, at any rate, uh, we're going to be discussing some things here today, and so please forgive that we don't have the perfect <coughs> setup. We are working on that. We're working on all of that, uh, and we, but we wanted to bring you a live program so that was that was interactive, so that you could uh, kind of just you know um, mix with us just a little bit. So uh, look, we've got a lot of ground to cover, so you know we may as well just get started here. Uh, the first thing, uh, I'm sure that everybody is wondering, um, rockets, bombs, explosions, dead people, why in the world would you leave the United Kingdom to come to Syria? The main reason uh, is you know, it's not hidden for the people back home or the people around the world was happening to the, th the Syrians and the atrocities that's happening to the Syrians and it, ever since the five years and the reason the Syrians have uh, revolted against the regime. So any uh, person with, uh, with sound belief and any person that has jealousy for the religion or jealousy for the truth would, would have uh, the eager to uh, support such cause. So my main reason is uh, to give support to the Muslims of Sham in remo removing the regime and replacing it with uh, justice. Another reason is you know, me being in the UK, living a normal life, just having a career or education, etc. I didn't feel at rest, or you know, I didn't feel normal just living a normal life. Now, many people might misunderstand this and think, okay, uh, the Mujahideen or the foreign fighters that do go to Syria, the reason they went, they didn't feel any belonging where they are, or they didn't have nothing. Now, this idea is misunderstood and it's very wrong, it's actually the opposite. What, what I saw is many of the Mujahideen in their past life before jihad or before coming to Syria, they had, they had for example wealth, they had uh, career potentials, they had careers, they left all of this but the only difference is, the reason they left this is for what they saw and for you know, the, the, the heroism which they have, which others don't have that they feel eager, that they need to support uh, their fellow humans or their fellow Muslims. Uh, but let's clear up one thing first. What is your role here? You are a fighter, is that correct? Fighting is uh, one of the main things that I do, but you know, revolution doesn't only uh, include fighting, there's many things to it. Uh, so for me, whatever I can provide, whatever I can benefit whatever service I can provide for this cause, I'll be uh, willing to do. Now, we saw a news piece on Channel 4 going back some time ago, and it mentioned that you are part of Jebutun Nusra. Are you still a part of the group? 
uh, I prefer to be I mean, with, without any particular group. Wherever I can provide my service for the deen of Allah or the service for the cause, I'd like to give it whoever, to whoever it may be, I mean, not to a particular group. So I don't have any allegiance to any particular group. So currently you're not a part of any specific group? No, rather I'm part of the cause. And in general? No. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, but um, ha are you, have you been a part of Al-Qaeda? You, have you ever been a part of ISIS? When I first came into Syria, uh, Jabhat Musa provided me with the uh, basic training and f if, if you like the start of uh, my fighting, you know, my, and also my, uh, most of my uh, battles which I participate is, is with Jabhat Nusra. And it's not hidden that Jabhat Nusra is uh, probably the first choice for many fighters because they are the most effective uh, in the ground. So people feel more at rest uh, participating with them. Okay, but now people back in your home country, I'm talking about the UK. Mm -hmm. They might say, Amma, you were raised in this country, you were born in this country, and then you go out to fight in Syria. And some of the, the, the battles that you participated in, you've participated with uh, Jebel Tun Nusra. You betrayed your country. What would you say to people who say that? What I would say is that humans have to belong to something which is greater uh, than countries, and that is either truth or falsehood. So if your country is with the falsehood, and then you choose the truth, it's not really betraying your country, it's betraying falsehood in general. So if the country is with falsehood, then I'm honored to betray falsehood and be with the truth. Okay, now I just want to mention to everybody here, uh, this is going to be interactive. So you can start, if you have not been doing so already, you can start to send in any questions that you might have for our guest. So you don't have to, uh, you, know, uh, you know, tomorrow say, well, why didn't he ask this and why didn't he ask that? You can ask these questions right here, right now. So uh, in just a few minutes, we're going to start to go to your questions. But I've got a couple more questions that I would like to ask you. Uh, firstly, uh, what, about, what about yourself? Mm -hmm. And then about other <coughs> British fighters. Do you intend to return to the UK? Is that your intention? Ever since I left the UK, I have, if you like, sold my life uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I'll be in this cause. So any movement which I do do would be for the cause. So I don't see any reason uh, in, in going back to the UK. As you mentioned, the other fighters, mostly I, uh, I think they have the uh, same attitude or same aim. So as far as, uh, as you know, most of them don't intend to return to the UK. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Two of your brothers unfortunately were uh, killed in this conflict so far. Mm -hmm. now, you grew up with them, you, you, you spent your entire life with them, you loved them. May Allah have mercy on them. Uh, do you think it was, I don't know, do you think it was worth it for them to come? Knowing what you know now, would you have done things differently? If their attentions were right, I think what they receive and what they will receive is more you know, greater than, and it's more worth more than what they have uh, provided. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, tells us in the Quran, shall I indicate you to a trade uh, which will uh, save you from uh, torment? And he also says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bought from the believers their wealth and their selves that for them is paradise, that for them is heaven. They fight in the path of Allah, they kill and are killed. So, and many ayat and hadith indicate uh, the greatness of uh, a martyr or someone who sacrifices himself in the path of Allah or is killed in the path of Allah. Your uncle, 
Your uncle was in Guantanamo. Mm -hmm. uh, he spent quite a bit of time there. Now, during an, well, I'm not going to call it an interrogation session. I'm going to call it a torture session. Uh, he lost one of his eyes. Did any of that, of course, w while you were a, a younger man, did any of that play a role in your coming to Syria? What role did, did that did that play in your mind at all when you were saying, "I think I should go to Syria"? Uh, if I'm honest, I don't see the relation in between him being in Guantanamo, being tortured in Guantanamo, and uh, what's happening in Syria. Uh, but saying this, uh, the effect which it did have on me is that. It made me more aware uh, of, you know, the uh, war on terror, if you like, which really is war on Islam. And it made, made me look into more uh, the Western government's attitude towards the Muslims and the Mujahideen. But answering your question, I don't see the relationship between this and Syria. So that didn't uh, play any role in, in your mind and when, when you wanted to come? Oh, no, there's no relation at all. All right. Uh, now that, I mean, is Syria home for you now? I believe so. Syria is home for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you faced a lot of difficulties yourself. I mean, you've come here. Uh, if you tried to return to the UK, I think that you understand that that would be a lot of difficulties, a lot of problems mm -hmm. if, if, if that happened. Do you think that maybe coming here wasn't such a good idea? Maybe you could have led a happier life if you would have stayed right where you were. All of what you mentioned, uh, including not being able to go back, was uh, calculated and predicted by me before even coming here. And it was even part of the plan, so to me it doesn't really matter. Uh, for me, it's, it's worse or you know, if you can call it a nightmare, to be uh, in the UK, not have this honor of being in jihad. Uh, you know, me and many Mujahideen alike, they tell of stories where the worst nightmare while they're sleeping they have is them being back home and not being able to come here. You know, I've had this a few times. I mean, seeing, look, why don't you describe to the people what was tonight like? We, be, we, we were about to begin f uh, 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 filming, mm -hmm. and then you tell them, wh what, what happened after that? Definitely uh, many strikes uh, targeting the general Muslims. Uh, you know, the, the, the terrorizing sound, you know, the, even if a fighter who's used to it, you know, it has an effect on them. So if you imagine what it could be for the general people that are not used to it, you know, the, the women and the children, the women which we saw running around holding their children, crying, you know, calling for help. You know, seeing this is, is, is very effective for the heart. And you know, it's, it's a big test. But you know, a believer, all, all he can do is believe that after this, the result will be great. And it's, this is just a test on the people to prepare them for the for the uh, great result, which is victory. All right. Uh, now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to some of the questions that you have been uh, asking. Uh, so, uh, mashallah, there are a lot of them here. Uh, it says here, um, uh, Muhammad uh, Adam has said, uh, Salam, wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi um, may Allah protect the innocent people, and for that, of course, we will say, Amin. And uh, it says here, may God save Idlib. Amin. Okay, let's take a look. Now, people are probably wondering why I'm looking a little bit to the side. Uh, we had a camera person that was here with us, but when the airstrikes happened, and we went out uh, to do what we do, which is a combination of filming and documenting the things that happen, but at the same time, we end up pulling people out of buildings and stuff like that. So he actually went to uh, uh, look after his family 
after we got, uh, he, he went to go look after his family um, after things quieted down a little bit. Uh, so we don't have the best, uh, you know, uh, picture quality uh, and all. We don't have that. But what we'll do is we will continue. We'll do the best that we can. So I'm looking a little bit to the side so that I can get the questions here. Okay, uh, it says here, 10 people confirmed killed on the airstrike. Um, on the National Hospital. Uh, yeah, you may know that uh, better than we do uh, because it was too dark and I couldn't confirm any numbers. Okay, uh, the question is, I think you've already answered this question, what group are you fighting for? I'll answer it again. I'm not fighting for any group. I'm fighting for the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm fighting for justice for the, for the people of Sham. All right, uh, let's see. Um, uh, how many foreign fighters are there fighting for the rebel forces? I can't answer. I can't predict. I don't know. And I don't know either. And to be honest with you, the security services, they don't know either. All right, they just throw numbers out there that they think are going to scare the people. Um, uh, and all say, hey, we've got so many fighters that are here that are fighting, and they may try to come back to the UK. So you should be afraid because there's so many of them. That's a scare. That's a scare tactic. You see. So um, well, may Allah make it uh, easy for everyone. I mean, um, how is the situation of the mujahideen? What is their situation like? What are their <coughs> spirits like? The spirits. Uh as usual, alhamdulillah, high. Uh, ever since you know, the entrance of Russia, there was big tests on the Mujahideen. You know, uh, a large effort by the Nizam, which I'll elaborate afterwards. Uh, you know, large efforts by the Nizam from Sahel to Rif Halib uh, You know, big, big, large efforts with the help of Russia trying to advance. Uh, they did advance a little bit. But alhamdulillah, what that caused is that it spread them more thin. And uh, yani it's surprising how a large force and large effort which Russia has put in, they only moved toward a few kilometers. Alhamdulillah, right now the Mujahideen have moved them back, you know, or close to where they were before. It will be back to advancement of the Mujahideen. All right. Uh, next, we have... Um, uh, uh, hey Bilal, um, where are you in Syria? Well, I'm going to avoid that answer because I'm trying to avoid the bombs and we don't know who sent that question in and we don't know what they want anyway. Where, Any, where everywhere can be. Where, 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 what did you say? We are everywhere where we can be. If yeah. we can be in Damascus, we'll be in Damascus. Uh, and, and that's the reality of it. You might wake up in one place. Mm. Um, and e when you go out, I remember what we used to do is we used to pack a bag and take that bag with you everywhere that you go because you could intend to come back that night and be gone for 10 days. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the situation sometimes. A uh, question that we have here is um, what is the situation in Halep right now? Now maybe I can answer this question. Mm -hmm. uh, the situation in Halep is very bad. It is very bad. The roadway, the Costello Roadway, which is the only open road going into the city of Halep, um, is bombed. And I'm going to quote one Ahrar Sham commander who told me just yesterday, every hour. It is bombed every hour. And the streets in uh, Aleppo, I'm sorry, not Halep, but in, in Aleppo, um, are deserted. Uh, so this is a, you know, it's very difficult to sell to the Syrian people mm. that there can be some type of negotiation mm -hmm. under these circumstances. Even by the looks of it, the Nidam is not looking for negotiation. If you see, as you mentioned, Halab, uh, what for the past uh, month, you know, there, there's a campaign, the start of the campaign that Halab is burning. From the beginning of the month, they've been targeting institutions. Uh, you know, specifically hospitals, uh, schools. You know, I've been to Halab in, since two weeks. You know, there's still some people around because they have nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the situation is really bad. You know, the, 
they're in poverty, they don't have anywhere to go, so they have no choice. And all the hospitals, all the hospitals which I have been past, all the hospitals which is in the city has been targeted by a, a Russian missile. The, now, keep in mind these are hospitals. Uh, y you, know, you know, these are war crimes, but you know it's interesting. If, for example, if we were to say that there is a man who makes the tea for Abu Bakr Baghdadi, and he's walking around in France or the UK somewhere, what do you think is going to happen to this guy? He'll be arrested. He'll, he'll be arrested heavily. right away. Mm -hmm. Bashar al-Assad is a war criminal, and Vladimir Putin is aiding and abetting him mm -hmm. by giving him weapons, uh, logistics, troops, but yet he goes from capital to capital, laughing and smiling with world leaders. Mm. I think the system is broken. Allah knows. Next. Okay, we have here. Okay, it says here, which is good uh, information. Uh, Ahmed Ibrahim says, uh, please don't expose your precise uh, details or exactly how far you are you were from the bombings as you'll be giving your location away which could be dangerous uh, which is very very true uh, you see so uh, hopefully uh, no bombs will be landing in the next uh, I guess 15 or 20 minutes before we end this interview and then I can get out of this area and all <laughs> you too <laughs> okay um, Okay, uh, we have here, does he know about this hadith? Muawiyah uh, mentioned that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, O Messenger of Allah, and let's see if we can get this, um, O Messenger of Allah, I have come to consult you. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, is, uh, it, it, because he, he wanted to go out and join a military effort. And he said, is your mother still alive? And he said, yes. The Prophet ﷺ um, said, quote, be with her for verily paradise is at her feet. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, I, first I'd ask you, is your mother still alive? Yeah, my mother still alive. Okay, uh, so I, I, I gather from what is being said there that the person is asking, um, uh, why, shouldn't, why don't you go home and take care of your mother? Paradise is at her feet. Well, simply, I think it's a bit too late. People need to realize that here is more of a priority. And if I was maybe uh, the only child and my mother was dependent on me, the, the situation would be different. But alhamdulillah, I am an able man, able Muslim. If we all thought the same and said uh, we need to be with our mothers, with our fathers, and it's jihad for the orphans. Mm -hmm. Jihad is, is for everyone, especially in this situation, since that the Muslims of Sham or the Mujahideen of Sham are in di dire need of numbers. So how could you be, you know, how could an able Muslim, able man, live with himself knowing this thing and saying, I want to be with my mother, I need to stay with my mother, even though his mother is not dependent on him. Or, you know, I don't want to say he doesn't need him, but you know, he's more of use and benefit here. Okay, all right, uh, we're going to continue here. Um, we, is it true that Jebhatun Nusra was watching while the uh, IS or ISIS um, was getting attacked while, uh, uh, while something jailing um, FSA against uh, ISIS? And is it true that many women were raped in Free Syrian Army prisons while Jebhat Nusra knew that it was taking place. Okay, so he means the the era when uh, FSA and Hrar Sham started fighting uh, Lola. Uh, I assume that yeah. that's what they meant. So speaking from from myself and from what I saw from Jabhat Nusra, the stance that they took is, uh, for example, I'm going to have to be specific with areas Atma and around Atma. What Jabhat Nusra did is they opened the doors for all of uh, IS fighters and asked them to come into the base. This was 2013. Mm -hmm. I remember I was in the base. Uh, 
the first day, you know, the first cars which arrived was injured. And then more cars arrived, it was more Dola fighters. And then more cars arrived, it was more you know, other f Dola fighters from other areas. So what, what the Emir or what the leader of Jabhat Musa, that area, the stance which he took is that we need to protect them from any aggression of FSA or whoever it may be. And at the same time, we need to prevent them from aggressing from any from uh, aggressing against the other side because we saw both sides as being Muslim. So the stance that we need to take is avoid uh, you know, the fighting between Muslims and, and so they did that for uh, I believe a whole month until uh, Har Sham and Jabhat Nusra they es escorted and provided for Dola to go to Bab and Raqqa and they called it for a mahkamah. Uh, What's a mahkamah? Uh, a court. Mm -hmm. to, you know, because it was too conflicting sides, they wanted to get to a solution. Uh, so th th so y you're saying that they protected them mm -hmm. so that the, the two belligerents could stop fighting and go to a court, is that? This is what I witnessed and this is what I was a part of. I mean, the first days, uh, you know, the, the, the dollar what about the rape of women? Did Jebel Nusra, as it says here, did they stand by and they s know that women were being raped and they were uh, uh, they there allowed was, that There was false uh, allegations and they've been followed. You know, the, uh, big leaders have went to, do to check and it was all false allegations. I think they accused mainly it was Liwa uh, Tahrir, etc. Liwa Tawheed, sorry. And there's no no incident which has been proven or even confirmed of rape. Not even Dola could you know, confirm that. Okay. Uh, keep in mind th that the word Dola, he's referring to ISIS, in case uh, any of you might have been uh, unclear about that. All right. Now we're going to go to the next question here. And um, uh, reports are that um, a couple of hospitals um, were hit in Idlib. Uh, do you have reports of the casualties um, as a result of these barbarous airstrikes from Putin slash Assad forces? Can you confirm these attacks? Um, uh, I can confirm that, that there were quite a few airstrikes here just uh, this evening as we covered. But uh, numbers and counts, I cannot confirm that. And I don't think anybody can really confirm uh, um, you know, uh, an exact total. Maybe there'll be a growing total. That's not going to happen until tomorrow because the reality is that there's no electricity. It's too dark. And I know that there are still people who are under that rubble who probably still need assistance, but because of the, the, the difficulty of the situation, unless they're able to cry out, I fear that when we wake up tomorrow, we're going to be looking at um, a growing um, death toll. And we hope that I'm incorrect, and I wouldn't mind being incorrect in that regard. Um, question, are you a threat to the UK? The UK government says that you are a terrorist, are you? I think I'll leave that for the UK to decide. I mean, what can I say? Well, I mean, uh, are you a terrorist? Do you think you are a terrorist? I mean, do you, when, when, do you believe that you fit the criterion of somebody who's a terrorist, attacks innocent people, supports people who attack innocent people, and I'm using this term loosely here uh, because there's an, an exact definition of a terrorist, but I think everybody could agree that a terrorist would be somebody that attacks innocent people. If that's what they mean by terrorist, but I think they mean otherwise, if what they mean by terrorist is attacking innocent people, then Alhamdulillah, I'm not, this is not from Islam, and this is not something that I do accept. You support people who do uh, attack uh, 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 non-combatants, innocent people, people who are not a part of the... Not at all. For me, uh, yeah, the main purpose of life is Islam, and the pinnacle of Islam is jihad. And the, and the, and the main reason for jihad is to take people out of the darkness to the light. So you're attacking the innocent people who you're supposed to give the light to, you're supposed to give the guide or spread the guidance to. You attacking them, is this how you give guidance to them? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, we're going to take another question here. Um, what advice would you give to foreign fighters 
uh, in Syria? Oh, me personally, I'm really the advice, but uh, given this honor and opportunity, which many yani, cry for, if you like, and if I didn't get this opportunity, I would be in deep depression and regret. And given this opportunity, I think they need to make the most out of it by developing themselves and gaining the experience and you know, providing uh, most of the time, if you like, you know, uh, Khattab, the Emir in Shishan, he says, whatever you give most of your time uh, in, you, you will achieve uh, any, the greater results. So if you give your time more in jihad, in training, in, in developing yourself, in educating yourself, uh, you, the fruits and the results will be greater. All right, let's move to the next question. Um, why are the rebels constantly attacking YPG held um, uh, Sheikh Maksud? Um, it does seem from the pictures being released by the YPG uh, uh, defense forces that those uh, affected by the shelling are a lot of civilian women and children. This is counterproductive. Uh, well, for what I know, the, those that are involved in the Sheikh Maksud Front is uh, mainly FSA factions like Firqa Suttash, the 16th Brigade, and the 13th Brigade but mainly the 16th Brigade. Now why exactly? I don't know, but what people do need to understand is that, especially in Sheikh Maqsud, the YPG is a very close ally of, of the regime. Having said that, that does not justify uh, shelling or causing the death of uh, the women or the children, or even, if you like, the non-combatant, because we consider the Kurdish people as Muslim. Our enemy is not the Kurdish people. Our enemy is the YPG, YPD, PKK, okay. the ally with the regime. So you make a distinction between these fighting groups and the general Kurdish people? Definitely. Okay. All right. Um, um, why doesn't Jebatu Nusra implement Sharia in those uh, uh, city areas that they have control over? Well, you clearly you can tell from the question, this is someone that doesn't know Jabhat Nusra or doesn't even know what's happening on the ground. But it's our job to enlighten them. So, uh, implementing Sharia, even if you translate it in Arabic, it will be Tatbiq al-Sharia. Yani, there's nothing in Islam called Tatbiq al-Sharia. Sharia, you have Tahkim, which is ruling by Sharia. Alhamdulillah. Every, Everyone on the ground knows that all the courts, uh, which is mainly two courts, they rule by Sharia. They don't rule by any other law. Having said that, the court is independent from all the other groups. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a court. It needs to be independent from, from groups yeah, so that there will be no political strings or, or, or power that uh, move it. Second thing, uh, there's something called Iqamat Sharia, which many people Confused, they confuse between what, what is tahkim, what is what iqamat. is iqamat al sharia. What iqamat is sharia iqamat. is raising the sharia. Now, tahkim al sharia is the duty of the uh, wali. Can I can I pause you for a second? Now, I don't know if you can hear that sound, but there is a siren going off behind. Uh, um, maybe you can hear that. That notes that there are planes uh, in the skies. You see. So uh, uh, we won't continue uh, too much longer because uh, maybe it is better if we leave this location. We're going to take a couple of more questions uh, uh, and also, you know, and then we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up just a little bit early here. Um, because, see, this is an, a daily occurrence for the people here. In, uh, in Syria. You can imagine the fright that the women and the children would hear when they hear that siren going off. Um, so uh, could you please um, uh, uh, maybe just kind of consolidate your answer? I won't, I won't take long. Mm -hmm. 
so we have two main points, tahkim sharia and iqam sharia. Tahkim sharia, ruling by sharia, is the duty of the wali al-amr, of the, the duty of the judge, yani, uh, the courts. Whereas iqam sharia, raising the sharia. I'm, I'm sorry to, to cut you off. Uh, I think what the question is saying here is, is that how come, how come we're not seeing, and this is what the question is asking, how come we're not seeing implementation of the Sharia? It, 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 you know, I think that's the crux of it and all. So you're going to have to maybe tighten that up a little bit. So I guess the ruling of Sharia is there, but the, the, the shortage is in the da'wah, in Amr Ma'ruf and Nahi Al-Munkar, which is the duty of the people. It's the duty of the fighters. Many people don't recognize this. And they say, okay, why doesn't Jabhat Nusra uh, do Iqam Sharia? Why they don't do Amr Ma'ruf and Nahi Al-Munkar? When it's Fard Kifay on all of the Muslims, it's not just Jabhat Nusra or Ahrar Shah. Okay, okay. So, some of the Arabic terms, you're going to have to help them to understand mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, you know, so we want to make sure that everybody can, um, can, can you know, Understand. get the full flavor of it. Okay, uh, we're going to go to the next one. And um, it says here, what currency is currently uh, used in Sham? Uh, the Syrian Lira. We, yeah, that was an easy one. Um, uh, we have um, uh, one question here. Do the fighters do suicide bombings? Do they do suicide bombings? We like to call it a uh, martyrdom operation and they are done you know, with uh, strict uh, if you like what's the word? strict uh, you know, need or you know, in order to do such an operation they, you know, there needs to be a need for it where you can't do anything else you know, to, to, to face this obstacle and there's many uh, rulings uh, behind it in order to make it uh, uh, doable. All right. Um, we're going to take maybe one more question, and let's take a look here. Um, uh, it says here, um, for Abu Khadija, uh, he says, um, Yeah, he, what can we do to help? What, um, what would you say to him? So what people can do that are not here to help is... is is many things. Uh, I'll just mention a few points. Uh, the important points is fund uh, because the jihad requires you know, the efforts of all of the Muslims. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and perform jihad with your wealth and yourselves. And he says, wealth before yourselves. Uh, this jihad is the jihad of the whole ummah. So the whole ummah needs to contribute and not make uh, the people of Sham need anyone else. Uh, the second thing which they can do is, uh, and I've suggested this to, to my followers on uh, Twitter, is research. And I requested for them to, to research what planes does Russia use and what features does it have. And whoever gathers information, they, they can help us with it. So we can find ways in, in finding uh, solutions in combating uh, these planes. And whatever they can. Uh, do research for the Mujahideen, the people of Sham, whoever they can benefit, will be good. You know. The third thing, uh, which is really important, is dua. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, uh, we're going to wrap it up here. Um, I'd really, really like to continue, but due to the situation that we're having here now, um, I think we're going to leave it here. Now, tomorrow, inshallah, um, we are going to... Uh, uh, put out the footage that we filmed uh, uh, this evening um, so that you can get an idea in terms of what a night attack like this looks like when it lands on people's homes and people and children are running barefoot in the street, don't know which way to go, don't know which way to turn. And what they do is they go into an open field so that they're not inside of the building structure. So if the missile lands on the building and then it takes out the entire building and it kills the entire family, and unfortunately, we've seen that many, many times. Uh, I would like to ask and request for people um, it, to please share this, uh, this episode of Face the Truth. The reason why we have the guests that we have is so that the people can look and they can see and they can understand. 
you know what, I like this guy because of what he says. Or say, you know what, I don't like this guy because of what he says. And it's based upon what he says and not what someone said about him or he said this or did that. So with that in mind, we're going to end it here. Jazakum Allahu Khaira. I'd like to thank you for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. And inshallah, um, we will be uh, picking up again next week, inshallah ta'ala. I am Bilal Abdul Kareem for Face the Truth. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.